Hey y'all, welcome back to Molly Cole Creations. This is Amanda. For project number one, I have created a kit. The kit will be available in the Etsy shop if anyone is interested. And Miss Molly is helping me get started. The kit is designed as three frames and they have a back to them and a frame to them. She is painting the frames in this DIY paint. It is a yellow and it's a very soft yellow, not a real bright. Um, it's called Cake Batter. I get all my DIY paints from a shop here locally called Jamie Ray Vintage. So Molly's just using a sponge brush. She isn't doing the tidiest of job here, but she did get it done. Next up, we are going to paint the green leaves, also using DIY paint in Avery. And this is just a nice, lovely green. It's um, not too dark and not minty or turquoisey either. So I really liked this green. These are the backs or the faces of these little signs. And I'm just giving them a good couple of coats of white. This white is just the Rust-Oleum chalk paint that I am always using. They do take a couple of coats. Here I am just using a toothpick to clear out those score lines. I do like those score lines to be fairly defined and visible. So I do clean those out each time I coat the paint and I'm just using a toothpick. You can use any little, sometimes I use whatever's handy. Sometimes even my, my Cricut tool, just whatever you can find. So after the second coat, they are good and covered. That is all that it needed. And then I just use a, like a paper towel or wet wipe to wipe off the excess and I'm laying out some blue tape that I'm going to, that's how I like to paint my letters. Keeps the letters still, keeps my fingers somewhat clean so I don't have to hold those small letters in my hand and they don't flop around. So I just like to lay them out on some tape and the letters are going to be done in black and the black that I use is from Folk Art and I'm just using a little makeup sponge to apply that black paint and these don't take any time at all and it only takes one coat and not a whole lot of cleanup around the edges because they are staying put right there on that tape so very simple and quick they dry quick so they can just be set aside and they'll be ready for you by the time you are on to your next step. There are the three little bees that go on to the frame. This was kind of the hardest part for me because I'm not super artistic. I did use some paint pens. I used some teeny tiny little paint like artist brushes. And I'm just using white paint, black paint, a white paint marker, a yellow paint marker, and then I do pull out a Sharpie at the end. The bees are scored with lines to kind of give you an idea of where you should put what, but a lot of it too is just, you're just kind of winging it and using what you think looks like a bee. And they, none of them, they're not identical. All three look a little bit different. As I said, I'm not an artist. I just did the best that I could. 
And really, what more can we do than just do our best? It was fun doing this hand painting. It's not something I do very often. It's fun to be creative, but sometimes when you're creative, that doesn't always mean you're artistic. So this was fun, and for me, just branching out a little bit, and I am happy with how they turned out. I do just finish those up. Just a little bit of touch-ups with each marker and defining those wings with that Sharpie marker. I didn't have a black paint marker. I think it had dried out. But the Sharpie did the job just fine. And after we get finished with these bees, we are going to pull everything together and get everything glued. So in this kit, each of the leaves goes with specific frames. So you kind of know which leaf goes with which frame, if that makes sense. So I start first by getting that yellow frame glued on and get that tightened up and straight. I match up the edges, make sure it's on there flush so that we don't have anything sticking out. And then I try to go through and figure out which leaf goes where. And on this one, I found that one. And then you'll see Molly had actually painted the wrong side of one. So that's how I was able to figure that out. But that's okay. I just set that one aside. Moving on to this a taller, skinnier one getting that all lined up and flush, put together, and figuring out which leaf goes where. And I get those glued down. I'm using the Sherbond glue thick, Sherbond thick, I think it's called. It's a glue that I use all the time. It's a really good super glue. It has a very thin nozzle, so it's good for these small pieces and it sticks very quickly, and once you lay it down, it's not coming up. So I grab that green paint once again, and just paint that other side, so that I can finish up the third frame. And that, like I, this paint is so quick to dry, it didn't take long at all. I'm just applying the bees that we hand painted and pulling off the litters. The litters are, of course, dry at this point. I just kept them on my tape so I didn't lose any. I'm just lining all the litters up where I want them, applying the glue, and laying them out. And then I repeat the same process for all three, of course. This is a really quick, really simple kit really cute. This can go in tear trays. They can go on shelves, on mantles. I've kind of even split mine up and used a couple in one space, a couple in the other. They would look just cute in your kitchen, in your family room. I love bees. I, I, I think bees are just a happy, fun theme to have in your home. So there they are, all three of them, and I think they turned out really cute, and they're really simple. And the last minute, I decided I wanted to put these white little polka dots. I told you I'm a sucker for polka dots. So I just took the end of just a regular paintbrush, rounded paintbrush, and dipped it in my paint and made some dots. I did that on all three. That's just, an, I mean, that is totally optional step. Just for my personal, that's what I wanted to do. Definitely not necessary. So this is a clearance frame I got from Hobby Lobby. And I had already torn off like the, we had a bunch of like cardboard on the back here, you can see. 
and I will probably have to pry these staples off with a tool, but anyhow, it was like 90% off, and I thought just a wood frame, it was like 90 cents or something ridiculous. So you can't go wrong there, but I am gonna cover this little gal up. So I'm just, I did tape it off because I want to keep the frame black. So I'm just going to give it a quick coat of white paint. It may take a couple to cover the little design that is already on here. All right, y'all. So I created this little decal in Cricut Design Space. And I found this really pretty, I don't, I think it's holographic, but I've had it for so long. I'm not even sure, but I thought it would be a really pretty touch. It is, it is made by Cricut and I did cut it on the holographic setting. However, I have not weeded it yet. So we shall see how that goes. I am going to weed it now. And then we can get some transfer tape on it and apply it to our cute little sign. All right, so the paint job didn't turn out too bad on here. And it ended up just taking the two coats. And I didn't really have any bleed, so I'm pretty happy with it. I did get this stuff we did. It was easier than I thought. It's just very brittle. Um, I wish I knew what it was. <laughs> it's an open roll that I've had for a long time and I can't remember what I used on before and I can't, I don't know. But I liked the color. I like the shininess of it. I did stick it to regular transfer tape. Now, if it's gonna need a strong transfer tape, then we might be in trouble. Okay, yeah, so this transfer tape is not cutting it. I used my scraper tool, squeegeed the back, squeegeed the front, did it over and over, did all the things, it just wasn't happening. And I am not about to waste this big piece of transfer tape. So I grabbed the backing sheet and put it back on. I do dig up some old strong grip transfer tape that I had. And neither of the pieces that I had were big enough to go across the whole thing. So I end up just kind of piecing it all together, which did work. And I just remembered why I don't use Strong Grip very often because it curls up really bad. It has this obnoxious Cricut purple writing on it that is hard to line up. And I've only ever needed it before with glitter vinyl, which I do not like to use. Same goes with this. Now I remember why I probably have a whole roll of this vinyl, whatever it is. I probably didn't like it the first time I used it. But anyways, it does stick. Eventually, little by little, I, I get it on to our transfer tape, our strong grip tape. And I get that finally on there. I realize that I miss a piece here I believe and I have to get my little Cricut tool and kind of dig that out. My fingers stick better to this than anything. Like I have to pry my fingers off every time I want to move. This stuff is no joke when they say a strong grip. I did break a piece right here that I have to do a little bit of surgery on after. But eventually we do get it on there and it is actually really quite beautiful. I do love the look of it. I'm just not sure it's worth the effort. 
So when or if anyone purchases this decal off the Etsy shop, it will definitely come in black. I am not going to put anyone through the suffering that I went through to get this thing applied. So it will be very simple in the black. But I am just lining this up as best as I can, ignoring the purple lettering there and getting it laid down and stuck as best as I can. And then just little by little, just inching that up and getting it off of that. Okay, we got it done. I don't know how well you can see it. It is actually really, really quite beautiful. I don't think this is something I would use often. That is for sure. But it is different than my normal, just black and white, I guess. And it is very, very pretty. This design will be linked. And if you have Cricut Design Space, you can size it to whatever you want to use it for. And what I did is I took different elements from other designs and I um, contoured and just kind of created my own. And I don't know, but they do have other ones to choose from in there that are similar. They're just a little bit different. The transfer tape even took off some of this like sheen. I don't know y'all. Maybe it's because this stuff is old because I've had it a long time. Or maybe it's because the transfer tape is old. As I said, this isn't the type of vinyl I will use very often. Unfortunately, I have a rather large roll of it. So there we go. But anyhow, that's done and it's very beautiful. On to project number three. This is another kit that you can find in the Etsy shop if you choose. And it starts with this wood board. It's roughly about 11 by 17. And don't pay any mind to mine because it does say be mine. I used a scrap from a Valentine's Day kit that I had left over. Uh, the one that is listed for sale will come blank, obviously. Those will be freshly cut and made to order. I start out with a coat of the Rustoleum white chalk paint, and I am using a toothpick as usual just to clear out those score lines and keep them defined. There are two options. As I just showed you, they say Be Kind or Queen B. It also comes with this circle cut of wood and a bunch of these half beads. These half beads I purchased from Timu, but they can't be purchased probably just about anywhere. I will probably get a larger pack on Amazon as the pack I bought from Timu didn't come with a whole ton of a lot but it did the trick for the two that I made for this project okay so I got all my little half beads and I don't know if I mentioned it these are the beads that I ordered from Timu the little half beads you can get them anywhere I just happened to be placing a Timu order and so I grabbed some, but I will link the ones that I got. They were very inexpensive and that will show the size because I'm not exactly sure what size they are. This did take 38 beads. The circle itself is, I already measured it, but now I can't remember. So let's find out. Roughly, oh yeah, I remember now. It was seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. That is the size of the circle that I cut. 
and so I got all the little beads glued on. That was fairly tedious, I'm not gonna lie. Took some time. I did use the Sherbond thick super glue. And now I am I just gonna paint all of it with a good coat of white paint. Using that same white paint, of course, the Rust-Oleum. I'm using just a sponge brush to start out and get a good couple of base coats on there. And I do go back with this smaller brush to get in between some of those tiny gaps from the beads just to give it uh, better coverage that way. And then I'm going to let this dry once I get all of this white paint on there and we will move on to the next step, which is our polka dots. So I, oh, nope, it is not. It is our black frame. So this is the top piece and it is the frame. And this is just the simplest part of the whole project. It is cut for you. It does match up with the backboard and has the little hooks if you wanted to hang it. And after this is dry, I am going in with a pencil, just a regular pencil, just to make those score lines even just slightly bit more defined. It doesn't make a huge difference. It's totally optional. It's just my preference. And I kind of fiddle faddle around with this stencil. Now the stencil also will come in the kit. And I am using some tape so that I don't get paint where I don't want paint. And I fooled around with it a lot longer than I showed you just to kind of decide where I wanted the polka dots to be and how they were going to line up with the frame and the middle circle and then I did mix up those two yellows once again and I get a little paint on my makeup sponge and then I dab off a little paint most of the paint and then I dab some more on to our board into the dots this stencil material is fantastic because you get very little bleeds, if any, and I've used it on fabric now, I've used it on wood, I've used it on paper, and I am loving it. I just create the stencil with my Cricut. The reason it's not a full sheet is because it, the way the board was designed, that it's not the same width. Okay, so how cute is this for real? But I think you're, for me to get a better idea on where I want to place my little polka dots, I need to have kind of an idea where this is going, because this is going to be on top. So I kind of traced it out just in pencil. I can wipe it off. And that way it'll give me a better idea of where I want to do some stencils or some half stencils and yeah we're gonna go from here and I'm gonna kind of place them one at a time until maybe I get down here um, so I'm not gonna tape anything off right now. This is so cute, y'all. All right, so this is what I get for being lazy and not taping it off because check it out. I get paint where I don't want paint. Luckily, it did wipe right off with a baby wipe. But not only do I do it once, as you'll see, I 
do it twice before I learn my lesson. And then eventually after I'm like, okay, what am I doing? Get it together. So when I finish it off, I do tape it once again so that I don't have to keep wiping stuff up. And it's, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. It did come right up with a baby wipe. It's just, I could have saved myself a little bit of hassle if I had taken the steps to tape things off the way that I should. But anyhow, it turned out beautiful and I absolutely love it. And here I am toying with which decal I want to use, the Queen Bee or the Be Kind. And then I'm like, wait a minute, this one is just for me. And I just got this new set of stamps that y'all have seen me use. And it has a bee on it. So, uh, heck yeah, I'm doing that. Now, I can't send out a set of stamps to everybody, so decal it is for the kit. But for my own personal, I did decide to use this B stamp, which looks almost identical to the B decal that I cut. It's just a little bit lighter, more rustic. It's not as finished looking as stamps go. And then I pull out the, I believe it's the letterpress. Um, alphabet stamp and I'm just going to spell out Queen Bee and I'm gonna put this in my craft room uh, if I was gonna put it like and I, I I might put the other one upstairs it says be kind but this one is just for me so I am using the Queen Bee and these stamp sets only come with one of each letter obviously so I did Q, U, E, left a space for the other E, and then the N. And then I have to do the other E separately, and I'm just kind of gingerly just eyeballing that one. I'm putting it down. And then I need to do the same thing for B, as it has two E's as well. And so I'm just kind of centering that the best that I can well the best that I can in my eye I didn't measure could definitely do that and be a lot more accurate than I am but I'm just okay with it so there is my second E and I think it looks absolutely beautiful and I love it so much so look how similar they look the font that I chose for the decal looks so similar to this letterpress stamp I just love it so I'm just cleaning off my stamps doing a little bit of tidying up and this is how it's gonna look once I glue everything down and I will put a ribbon or a hanger on it um, whether or not I actually hang it I don't know if I will do that or not but first I am gluing on the middle with the same glue sure bomb thick and then doing the black frame the frame is no guesswork you just match it up make sure everything is aligned and you got that done and then I do use some sandpaper, I believe, to, you know, I gotta rough everything up just a little. So I get some sandpaper out and just bring back some of the wood grain from the frame and the beads. And then I will be just about done with this project. And I love how simple this was. Again, if this was a kit that you wanted to order, it would come with everything other than it will come with a decal to apply. 
and I will show you, I did make one with the decal, so you'll see how they both look, and they're both absolutely adorable, so gorgeous and classy, I'm just vacuuming up my sawdust here, and cleaning things up. This is probably my favorite project in this video. Y'all have to let me know which one you guys like the best. And this could actually be created without a kit. Just get yourself some wood, some beads, and cut you a decal. And you're all set. And this is the end result. I just love them all they go together so well with the yellows and the black and this is the one with the decal that will be sold i did put some twine in case you wanted to hang it whether or not i hang mine like i said i'm not sure that i will but these are all the projects that we did in this video and these are happy they are sunny and just a nice element to have in your home during the spring and summer. Thank you all so much for joining me. Once again, thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for being a YouTube friend. And I hope you enjoyed everything we did tonight. And we will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Molly Cool Creations. Click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe and press the bell. <laughs> Bye. See you in the next video. And don't forget to watch every single video we make.